Hello there and welcome back to Utility Sports. If you do enjoy NFL draft content, here is the place to subscribe. We do a lot of NFL draft content, a ton of mock drafts and other analysis of NFL draft prospects. So please subscribe here if you do enjoy that kind of content. Okay. So this is our second round mock draft. This is a continuation of our mock draft earlier in the week of the first round. So I'm gonna quick scroll through and just kind of give you a little overview of what happened with your teams and uh, kind of the expectations moving into the second round of this mock. I'm um, kind of interesting with the quarterback situation. We had a lot of quarterbacks go, um, obviously in the top 19. So there's kind of the last few picks. As you can see, Terrace Marshall Jr. went to Kansas City with that uh, final pick of the first round. Now we move on to Jacksonville here with the first pick of the second round and kind of looking at what's available for them. They definitely need to consider the cornerback position. For me, that is a positional need for Jacksonville. They also need to look at the tight end spot. And I think they're actually gonna go with Pat Fryermuth from Penn State because Jacksonville definitely needs a tight end. Stop the cap. <laughs> they have Tyler Eifert under contract for this next season and then he's done. Oh, it is what it is. It is, it is what it is. <laughs> They have to have a consistent target for Trevor Lawrence. So they will be getting one in Pat Fryermuth from Penn State with that selection. Now looking at the Jets here at pick 34, they for sure need a wide receiver. They need an edge, a couple of ways that they can go. Let me kind of lay it out for you. Looking here, um, obviously there's a couple of nice pass rushers that I'd like at this spot here, um, especially uh, uh, excuse me, Jason away from Penn State, another guy I really, really like. But I'm going to have them actually looking at the wide receiver position. We are going to pair up Justin Fields with Chris Olave, deep threat wide receiver from Ohio State. He will be the selection. Now looking at Cincinnati's next pick, obviously they took Sewell in the first. Now we're going to kind of look at possibly the defensive side of the ball. If we look at the cornerback position, we see Asante Samuel Jr., is still here on the board. I think that makes a ton of sense for Cincinnati to address that cornerback position. They also could look at wide receiver to address uh, the loss of AJ Green at the end at the end of the season because obviously I don't think he will be coming back. I think he's going to be signing with a contender. So um, I think that's something that they could look at at this position. I think corner is also a kind of a pressing need here as well. We are going to go with Asante Samuel Jr. And now at pick 36, Carolina addressed the quarterback position in the first round. Now we have to take a look at the linebacker position, which is a big need for them. Dylan Moses is an athletic linebacker, will really be able to play uh, in that Carolina defense. I think he really fits well with what they're trying to do. Athletic uh, players, obviously, with um, you have Jackson, you have Shaq Thompson. Uh, I think Dylan Moses really works out well here at pick 36. Now for the, the Falcons here at this selection at pick set, uh, 37, you see a lot of different needs that they, they could possibly go. I see linebacker is a, a possible position that they go. I still think, I know it's crazy, I think they still need another edge uh, with this selection. I, I do think, I, I think linebacker is another place that they can look. So we look once again at the edges. There's a couple of nice ones here. I think that's something that we could wait in the second round but I think it would be kind of interesting to address the linebacker position for them. I really like Jabril Cox from LSU. He was the NDSU transfer. He has played you know, really well with his time at LSU. He will be the selection here for Atlanta. And now at pick 38, we have Miami. They definitely could use an edge once again. A couple of teams need edges at the top of this second round. But for this selection, we are going to be looking at Jason Away uh, with the 50. He's the 52nd ranked prospect in this board, but I think he's a better all around prospect than that. So we will be having Miami go with an edge here. And now we have Philly. Once again, I think that they could look linebacker as well. I think a guy that would really fit in nicely is Nick Bolton from Missouri. Uh, I think that Philly needs to address that linebacking core. They've had some struggles there, but they got their dynamic uh, weapon in round one, and then they come back and they select a linebacker. Now for Dallas here at pick 40, you can look at the safety position and say they might have to address that. It really depends on Woods' contract. 
Obviously, uh, they're going to have to re-up him at the end of the year, but if they're not able to get that done, they're going to have to fill that position. Trayvon Merrick would be the selection for me for Dallas, just considering that they want to continue to revamp that secondary. Um, obviously, they addressed it in the first round with Sertan, but then they come back and get Merrick, and that secondary secondary starting to look really, really good at that, at that point in the draft. Now we're here at 41 with the Chargers, and I think the Chargers' biggest need right now is to get a tackle. They must, must, must get a tackle at this position. They were able to address the edge position considering that uh, Melvin Ingram, his contract's up at the end of the season. They have to get a consistent pass rusher. They get that in round one. Now they got to come back and they have to protect Justin Herbert and Jalen Mayfield's going to be the selection. I think if you're the Chargers, you have to make sure that you keep uh, Justin Herbert upright and the best way of doing that is protecting him up front. Now looking here at the Giants pick at 42, Obviously, there's a few ways that they could go. I think edge is definitely a pressing need for them. We're going to kind of take a look at what they have at the edge position. Uh, Hamilcar Rashad, uh, Rashad Jr. from Oregon State is a name that has flown up draft boards. Um, I think Aiden Hutchinson's also another, another name to watch. But uh, we'll go with Hamilcar. And I think that if you're the Giants, you definitely have to address the front seven in this draft. And I think you can really afford to do that in you know rounds two and three, but I, I really like that for New York. Now you're here at uh, 43, where you, you are the Detroit Lions and taking a look at what they need. The front seven's a big concern. We, we've been talking about this quite a bit on the channel. The Detroit Lions have to fix the front seven. A way of doing that is getting an interior defensive lineman. Definitely a big name uh, for this team. Jordan Davis from Georgia is going to be a guy you're able to slot right in the middle of that defensive line. They definitely have to keep, you know, making some moves and, and furthering that front seven. But I think that you have to start by the trenches and especially the interior of that defensive line. You got to get better against the run and you got to be able to generate some pass rush from the middle. So Jordan Davis does that for the Detroit Lions. Now at pick 44, we have the San Francisco 49ers. And looking at kind of what they need here, Obviously, they addressed the quarterback in round one. Now we come back and we take Paulson uh, Adebo from Stanford. And I think he is going to have to replace Richard Sherman. Obviously, at the, the end of the year, it sounds like Sherman will not be back. So that's one of the biggest needs for the 49ers is you have to get a cornerback. And uh, Adebo does that for you. So looking at that, you, you, get, you replace a really big time player in Sherman. Hopefully, they're able to... Uh, develop him moving forward but corner is a huge need for the 49ers right now now looking at pick 45 you have the denver broncos obviously a lot of people would like to see an edge drafted here as well some people think tackle juan james is at, at one tackle and um I, you could consider replacing him he's probably league average at this point but i think edge might be a little more of a pressing need at this point Ah, uh, kind of looking at it. I think linebacker is another place that you could look, if I'm going to be honest. This this is one of the tougher picks to kind of nail down here. Uh, I think that for this selection, we're going to probably still take an edge. Um, I think uh, Jalen Phillips from Miami is a really, really nice prospect. Uh, we are going to have him go pick 45 here to the Denver Broncos. Now at pick 46, the, the Jags get another top tier selection in terms of where they're slotted. Uh, to select. They took care of the quarterback. They took care of the tackle spot. They took care of tight end. Now you have to look at the safety position. You can't have guys like uh, Andrew Wingard uh, starting for you. you. I don't think that you can see um, Jared Wilson, you know, doing any more than he already is. Like he's playing so much right now. You, you cannot have him in the secondary any longer. Um, Richard LeCount III is going to be the selection. He's a guy that can um, He's a very steady tackler. So I think that really works out for Jacksonville because they've had a lot of issues tackling in the secondary. He's going to be able to replace Wingard, who obviously is um, replacing Ronnie Harrison, who they had traded. So that a tough situation for Jacksonville, obviously, but you, you need to get a safety to help aid that secondary. And now you're New England. Your biggest need right now to me is wide receiver and interior defensive line. Uh, definitely have to address that interior, that defensive line for sure. 
I think that's your number one priority right now. Marvin Wilson from um, Florida State is going to be the selection. It was considered that he was the um, one of the be better prospects going into the draft. He had lost some stock in that. Uh, it, it, it's tumbled a little bit, but we saw him early in the year being a top 20 player, and now he's kind of fallen a little bit. Uh, but I think that is the selection for New England. Now at pick 48, we have Chicago. Chicago definitely needs to address that offensive line. And to do that, I think that they should look at the tackle position in particular. I, I think that, you know, if you draft a quarterback, you have to have a tackle ready to go. And um, Eichenberg from Notre Dame is going to be a phenomenal prospect for them. I think he is going to be able to protect the passer and he's going to be very, very consistent for the Chicago Bears. And that's what you need to see on that Chicago Bears offensive line, a little more consistency. Um, and he's going to provide some con continuity for that, that old line in Chicago. Now, if you're Oakland, or excuse me, Las Vegas, you do need to make a decision here. Do you want to address that interior of that defensive line, which hasn't been able to address to get a lot of pass rush? Or do you want to look at the edge spot once again, because lack of pass rush? Um, they've been one of the worst teams in the NFL in terms of the ability to generate sacks and sack numbers. So I think that they have to consider the edge spot and the interior defensive line uh, spot as well. I think Aiden Hutchinson probably would be the selection. It's going to be interesting to see what Las Vegas decides to do with the, the two edges that they have currently. But I think Aiden Hutchinson fits in really, really well with the Raiders. Now at pick 50, we have the Baltimore Ravens. Obviously, they have a big need at safety. They could look at edge and wide receiver. A couple of things that they might want to do. They got their interior offensive lineman earlier in the first round. Now looking at the safety spot, I think there's a couple of guys that they could look. I think Javon Holland, who is a, a very consistent player all around. He doesn't have any elite traits, but he's able to do a lot of different things um, at a pretty consistent and uh, pretty good level. So I think Javon Holland would be the selection here. If you're Baltimore, you want to see a little more cons uh, consistency out of that secondary. Obviously, they've, they've had some young guys playing back there. So Javon Holland will be the selection for Baltimore. And now looking at the Washington football team, I think after drafting a quarterback, you have to look at tackle. You, you are going to come back and take uh, Alex Leatherwood from Alabama. I think that for you, you have to be able to keep your drafted quarterback upright in order to see him succeed. And for Washington, you definitely have a big gaping hole at tackle. Obviously they've lost guys in free agency and stuff, and they got to be able to, you know, rebuild up that offensive line, which I don't think it's terrible, but I think that they do need to address that in the second round here. And now if you're Arizona here at pick 52, you have to consider edge because Marcus Golden is in the final year of his deal. I think Carlos Basham's a phenomenal fit with Arizona. You got to have a guy that's able to consistently generate pass rush. Carlos Basham from Wake Forest can definitely do that for you. At pick 53, we have the Miami Dolphins. And Miami, they've been able to address quite a few things in this mock. But I think something really, really big that they can address here is the running back position. So far in the draft, this is my steal. Absolute steal of the draft at pick 53 if he lasts this long. I don't know if he is going to last this long, but Miami would select Najee Harris, a guy who's an absolute bruiser at running back. He's had a phenomenal season. Uh, it's argued that he could win the Heisman as a running back. I don't think that's going to happen this year though with the passing numbers that guys like Kyle Trask and Mac Jones have put up. But I think this is a great selection for Miami at pick 53. Now at pick 54, we have Tampa Bay. Obviously, they could use some offensive line help as well. I, I think people are kind of um, underrating that part of it. We're going to take a look at what is available at the interior offensive line. Uh, Elijah Vera Tucker would fit in great with Tampa Bay. You're going to be able to have Marpe at one guard spot and Vera Tucker, Vera Tucker as the other spot. I really like that for Tampa Bay, getting a guy to, to help protect the interior of that old line and protect Tom Brady ultimately. Now, if you're Indianapolis, you have to make a decision on T.Y. Hilton this offseason. Are you going to bring him back? We do not know. Under the assumption that they're not able to get a deal done with T.Y. Hilton, they have to address wide receiver. And I think there's a couple of guys that really make sense for them. I think Rondell Moore kind of fits exactly what T.Y. Hilton's role is. 
and they're pretty similar in size actually too but I, I think that Rondale Moore would be a really really good selection he's going to be able to play a ton out of the slot very consistent receiver for Purdue I like that selection for Indy now if you're sitting at pick 56 and you're Cleveland you have a couple of places that you might want to go you can look at corner and you can look at linebacker I think that they would look at linebacker for sure and uh, Chaz Surratt from uh, North Carolina would be the selection. You want to address that linebacker spot if you're Cleveland. And once again, you're being able to build up that front seven. So if you're Cleveland, you you're feeling pretty good. And with those two, two selections, I think you'll be able to definitely defend the run a little better. Um, you're getting some guys that have been able to have proven that they can defend the run. At pick 57, we have the Rams making their first selection. And I think their biggest need right now is the offensive tackle position. Obviously, um, they're aging up front, right? Uh, Whitworth isn't going to be around forever. And I think Dylan Raddins is a steal at this, at this spot as well. You get another offensive tackle who's going to be a big impact player right away as soon as he gets into the league. Now at pick 58, we have Seattle making their first selection as well. Obviously, um, they traded their first rounder away in the Jamal Adams deal. Edge is definitely their biggest need at this point to me, considering that um, they haven't been able to gen generate a ton of pass rush either this season. But Quincy Roche from Miami, who was regarded highly going into this year, he was extremely productive before he had transferred to the University of Miami. He will be the selection here for Seattle. Now at pick 59, we have the Tennessee Titans, which they could look a couple of different directions. The interior of their defensive line or the wide receiver spot are, to me, the, the two biggest needs. I do think they have this correct on the site. But looking at it here, I think that Tennessee would look at wide receiver first. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown is a really good fit for Tennessee, just considering that he is one of the best run blocking wide receivers in this entire class. I think he's going to be able to uh, have a be a consistent target for Tennessee. If Corey Davis doesn't get his contract done, I mean, they have A.J. Brown and then Corey Davis. But if Corey Davis is gone, you have to have a guy able to step in right away. Amin Ra is a really, uh, he's a ready prospect that could step in, make a huge impact for Tennessee's offense. Now at pick 60, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Obviously they could look at the tackle position. I, I think that they, they could look at tackle for sure, just considering that there's some contract uncertainties. Um, Daniel Felele is going to be the selection. He is a huge offensive tackle from the University of Minnesota. He's only been playing uh, football for I think it's three years in total in his life he's a guy that Pittsburgh can mold I, I think that Pittsburgh does a great job with molding offensive linemen and offensive players in general so I, I think Felele is a huge selection for uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers now if you're sitting here at 61 you are New Orleans um, obviously Drew Brees' contract is up or excuse me he very well could retire at the end of this season and looking at this right now there's a couple of ways that they could go they could force a quarterback here and kind of throw him into the mix going into next year or they can just wait to see what's available in the later rounds if they could develop one of those guys later um i i don't see them going with the quarterback in the second round i really don't i i'm not sure if they don't go qb round one if they're going to go qb for a while so kind of looking at it, i think they could use some more depth at linebacker um i think that Merlin Robertson from Arizona State um, would be the selection here. Just considering that they need a little more depth at linebacker, I really like that for New Orleans. Um, Robertson gives that to them. And now here at 62, we have the Buffalo Bills. One of their biggest needs is corner at this spot. Uh, kind of looking at the corners that are on the board right now, we have Tyson Campbell, we have Kerry Vincent Jr. I think that um, Tyson Campbell is the best prospect still on this board. We saw the corner Eric Stokes from Georgia go earlier. Now we can see Tyson Campbell from Georgia go at that 62nd spot. And now if you're Green Bay at 63, this is kind of a time to finally address wide receiver once again. Kadarius Toney is the best wide receiver left right now. I think him and um, these, these, all these guys are, are very viable options, but Tony is super dynamic with the ball in his hands. And that's what Green Bay could use a little more of, a little dynamism to their offense. Kadarius Tony is going to be the selection. And then finally at pick 64, we have Kansas City. Once again, they could address in their interior, their offensive line, which is where I think they'll go. 
Earlier in the year, I had them mocked into your O-line in round one, but I think it's really essential to get them a top tier playmaker in the back end of the first round. And then they can come back and still take a very solid uh, guy as well. There's a couple of players that I would like to see them select. Creed Humphrey is a center though. And um, I think Trey Smith actually works best because he has functioned as a guard at Tennessee. Trey Smith will be my selection. So that is going to conclude our NFL mock draft. Please subscribe if you did enjoy what you saw in the video. Also leave a like button if you did enjoy what you saw in this video. So we do appreciate you tuning in and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.